Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be fixing this Tektronix P5205 diff probe. Uh, all that's really wrong with it is this wire it appears. Uh, it definitely looks like somebody tried to fix it before. We have uh, pry marks around the case from uh, attempting to open it. Uh, it looks like they couldn't figure out how to get in to fix it. Uh, so let's uh, get this thing opened up and see if we can fix it. There's a little bit of a trick to getting it open. The screws are hidden and they're not hidden the way you would think they were. It definitely looks like uh, the previous owner went through all of the uh, attempts of getting it open uh, without success. So uh, let's uh, tear into this thing and get it fixed. Before we actually start tearing into this thing, let's take a quick look at it and get an idea of what we're working on today. So this uh, diff probe has a maximum of uh, 1300 volt input on here. Uh, and it's a high voltage, 100 megahertz differential probe. Uh, they're made by Tektronix. They're meant for their scopes that they made in the late 90s, early 2000s that have uh, this little connector here that allows for the power and the identification and the switches to uh, help control the scope. So uh, basically you just plug it and forget it on your scope. It takes care of all of the settings and everything. You can use these without a uh, Tektronix scope, but you have to uh, open them up and modify them to power the 15 volts. There's like a plus and minus 15 volts that this thing needs to run. It looks like they broke one of the uh, connectors here. This is not the original style connector. So in this video, we'll go ahead and just replace both of them, the, uh, the red and the black. Silicon high voltage cable and some Pomona's with the retractable sheathing. And just to give you an example of why I wanted to use uh, the Pomona's is because they will work with the Probe Master probes. So I can just stick those on the end and have probes that have that length of wire. And if for some reason I needed them to be longer, again, I can use the uh, probe master and put it that way. And I don't have a risk of this shorting because the sheathing is on Okay, it. so the trick for getting inside of these is to actually come up and peel the sticker back a bit. And then the screw is exposed. So uh, there's four screws in all four corners. Um, well, there's one screw in all four corners. And that's all there is to getting inside of this. So, you know, no need to pry on the edges like uh, whoever tried to get into this before. Um, and now all that we have to do for our repair is get these two wires off and uh, try to route our new wires. Hopefully we can pull, pull it out of here and get it through the um, existing sheathing there, but I, I don't know if that's going to happen. If you need to mo modify this to use with a uh, different uh, oscilloscope, this would be where you're working. I believe it is the, um, the brown and the blue wire but don't quote me on that. I've never actually had to do this modification. Uh, I'm just aware that it is a thing. Um, maybe if there's some interest in it, we can make a custom circuit board with the uh, adapter. Um, so that way uh, we could do an adapter for the newer tech scopes, which would just plug right in, or um, even just doing it where you have a plug to power the, these tools. All right, so let's uh, break out the desoldering gun. Okay, so uh, this did pull right through. Okay, I uh, had to fight with it a little bit to get it through that uh, over molding. I mean, it was obviously molded onto the old wire, so it doesn't easily go on. Uh, I drilled it out to uh, get them to go in there a little easier. And uh, in the process of doing that, it broke off the actual strain relief that was on there. So uh, I just took a uh, X-Acto knife and kind of cleaned it up so it looks nice and kind of original. But yeah, we don't have that strain relief anymore. 
But again, I'm just going for aesthetics here, so that way it looks nice. Uh, and now let's try to feed this through the board. Okay, so now let's uh, just slide this guy back into the housing here. Get these over moldings back in there. And then flip it back over. And now we have a diff probe that actually has some connectors on the end of it. Let's put uh, at least a, one screw in it and test it out. These guys go in like that. And now it should be on. And we got our trigger. Let's just turn our trigger to uh, auto instead of, there we go. And so it's in 100 volt. We can change the range. So now we're in the 50 times instead of 100 times and the uh, scope automatically detects that. So uh, you just push the range button and we can change uh, which range we're in and then obviously your scale. Um, so we're at 10 volts per division and then let's just go ahead and plug in a 10 volt power supply into those banana connectors on it. And there we go, we have 10 volts. So we have a working diff probe. Um, Now, instead of the uh, diff probe, let's uh, hook up to, now instead of just a plain power supply, let's hook up to a um, uh, BNC and then on to the function generator. There we go, we have a four volt peak to peak and um, let's change our scale. So we're at two and a half volts. Let's get one volt so that way we have a little bit clear. And let's turn off our cursors. So now with the cursors off, we can see that's about four, four volts peak to peak at one kilohertz. I don't know if I've shown this scope on the channel yet, but uh, I replaced my Siglent with this uh, Tektronix. And I also have, I also have this uh, Tektronix TDS 5054 that I did the repair video on. Um, so I have two scopes here that'll work with it, but pretty much any of the scopes that have, uh, this particular connector on it should accept the, um, these series, but you also, they sell the adapters for these that you can use on the newer scopes. So the, the newer ones, they went to that plug that just kind of plugs right in instead of the twist. And, um, that those ones that Tektronix sells also have an adapter and these still work with those, uh, newer scopes. So keep that in mind that if you see a broken one of these, it might be worth fixing. But yeah, we have the uh, soft case for it as well. So we'll get it back in there and you'll probably never be able to tell that uh, I was inside it.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this repair video. I know it was kind of a simple repair. We're just replacing a broken wire, but we got to take a look at the inside of these Tektronics and see a little bit of the operation on the scope there. So definitely, I enjoy doing these kind of videos. I hope you all enjoy watching them. And uh, I got some more interesting stuff coming up real soon. We'll be revisiting the uh, J1850 project that I had been doing for a, a while. We figured out how to read the chip, so we'll be looking at a video of reading that chip, and I also have some amplifier repair videos coming up, so uh, definitely keep an eye out for those videos, and I hope to see you in the next one.